Wow, I feel like even back then, the back of the book gave too much away. I don't wanna tell you guys that. <laughs> and it was asking about like, why? So 20 years ago, title of the book, way back in the day. But the diva in me did not want to reread a mass market paperback. And Sutton's gone, and Sutton, oh, what, 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 why can't I say their names? Like a little bit different, like, like, like. Stop saying like. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is going to be a little something different in the sense that I wanted to talk about a bunch of books that I feel like I never talk about or a bunch of authors that I don't talk about a ton. So I got a tremendous comment on one of my recent videos when I was talking about what I was gonna read for series September. And it was asking about why sort of the same authors always come up over and over again on people's channels. And I not only was like, yes, <laughs> I totally agree. But it's actually something that I had noticed when I was going through Instagram and trying to find some inspiration about what I wanted to read next. This was like a few weeks back. And I was like, everybody is showing the exact same books. And while I get that we all wanna read some new releases or we all have favorite authors, and a lot of times those favorite authors are bestsellers or people who are always in the news, there's also so many tremendous authors that don't get a lot of airtime. And as someone who is writing a book, is hoping to be published, I want to shout out, not that it, all of these authors are necessarily unheard of authors or anything like that, but they are definitely not authors that I talk about a ton. And I definitely gravitate towards my favorites. I won't say his name <laughs> because I feel like I talk about them all the time. But I was trying to also make a concerted effort even before this comment came, but it also sort of like reinvigorated me to make sure that I'm not just making the same book recommendations or just talking about the same specific book. So I love me a conversation starter in a comment. I love the feedback from you guys, so please keep it coming. And if you have other suggestions for other less chatted about authors, definitely keep that coming as well. So part of why I do this and part of why I love this is because of the discussion and the engagement here. So I'm gonna talk about a bunch of books. It is some thrillers, some contemporary, there used to be a time where I read tons of contemporary, but I wanted to just shout out some of these and would like to continue to do this. So maybe this is like kind of a series that I'm gonna do. And let's just jump in and start with the first round. So the first book I wanna talk about, I actually, I have wanted to reread this book for quite a long time, but the diva in me did not wanna reread a mass market paperback that I have held on to for years. So this is Silent Witness by Richard North Patterson. So way back in the day, I used to gobble up mass market paperbacks and read them on the train when I was commuting to work. This is a thousand percent a, I lived in Boston at the time. It's brown, it's seen some days, it's seen some years. But this is when I was full force into my John Grisham legal thriller zone. And this book came out in 1996 and I, loved this book. So in my more recent, I haven't filmed it yet, but it'll be coming, thrifted book haul that I did, I found the hardcover of this, which I am so excited about. So A, I'm going to donate this, and B, I'm going to reread this, and I'm so excited. So not that anybody cares that I've got the hardcover, you're like, what's it all about? So this book follows two timelines. The first one is 1967, and we are in a small Midwestern town and we are following 17-year-old following Tony Lord. So he is star athlete, he is all the things, and he left his hometown because his girlfriend was murdered when they were in high school, and he sort of left all those memories behind. So 27 years later, he is forced to return to the town, forced, I love me the reluctant return home, because his best friend from high school is being charged with homicide. So Sam is now a married father of two. He is a local football legend, and he was also the last person to see Tony's girlfriend alive all those years ago. So there was some suspicion in the past. There's suspicion about some sort of murder that happened in the present. So it says, probing the darkest recesses of love and friendship, Lord will discover things too disturbing to ignore. So it becomes a question of, is his best friend a murderer? and can he defend him and get him off for the current charge. So I am so excited to reread this book. I haven't read this book in ages and I'm going to. So I'm very, very excited. So I know Richard North Patterson has wrote a whole ton of books 
and I did read several of his books back then because I was all compulsive and crazy about it, but this is the only one that I kept. So Richard North Patterson up first. Yes. The next book I have is The Neighbors and this is by Hannah Mary McKinnon. So she has written multiple books and I have read other books by her since, but this was the first of her books that I did read. And I wanna say this was like either right at the beginning of my booktube days or right before, this is before I was putting dates in the books when I was reading them. But I feel like this was in my first book review video that I did. If I'm feeling brave, maybe I'll share some of that footage. But in this one, we have a woman named Abby. And in 1992, she was responsible for a car crash that killed her beloved brother. And it says it's a mistake she can never forgive. So she pushes away Liam, the man she loves most, knowing that he would eventually hate her for what she's done. So 20 years later, Abby is married to Nate. They have a child of their own. She's still very much living with the guilt of what happened that night, but Nate is actually the man who helped pull her out of the car before it exploded in flames and her brother died. So even though she has managed to move on in some ways, she hasn't managed to move on in all the ways. And then in a strange twist of fate, the new neighbors move in next door and wouldn't you know, it's Liam, her boyfriend from back in the day, who she left. So Liam has his own family and Abby and Liam decide to pretend that they've never met. So this was just sort of all sorts of twistiness, secrets, lies, marriage, friendship, love, relationship, parenthood, guilt, everything. I just absolutely loved this book so much. And this is one of those books, and this is what happens every time I do one of these videos, I'm like, I wanna reread this. I thought it was amazing. So really, really tremendous book. Like I said, I've read a few Hanny Hannah Mary McKinnon books since then, but this is absolutely my favorite of them so far. Okay, so I know John Mars is a talked about author, but I feel like I don't talk about What Lies Between Us enough. So the one is the first book of his that I read. I feel like everybody talks about the one for good reason, because it's amazing. And he has a new book coming out, which I'm super excited about. I think early next year, I will verify that for you guys. And I just love him. So I have multiple books of his that I haven't read yet, but that's a story for another day. So this is one of those books that I a thousand percent think that you should go into as blind as possible. So I'm just gonna read a snippet on the back and it says, Nina can never forgive Maggie for what she did and she can never let her leave. They say every house has its secrets and the house that Maggie and Nina have shared for so long is no different, except that these secrets are not buried in the past. Every other night, Maggie and Nina have dinner together. This is where it gets super creepy. When they are finished, Nina helps Maggie back to her room in the attic and into the heavy chain that keeps her there. What happened? I thought this book was tremendous. I binged this book, past and present timelines, talk about secrets and lies and all sorts of messed up stuff. This book was absolutely tremendous. The one sold me on John Mars as a writer. This like sealed the deal twice as hard. I just thought it was so, so good. I love him. I love Dark and Twisted, as you guys know. And this is a great book to read if you're into that too. The next book I have is Baby Proof by Emily Giffen. And this book is so faded. It's so blown out on camera. I'm sorry. It's this beautiful yellow. <laughs> it's so faded. <laughs> so this is her third book and I love old Emily Giffen. So I compulsively read her books and it's not that I don't enjoy her anymore, but I don't gravitate towards her the same way that I used to, but I absolutely fell in love with some of her earlier writing. And this is probably I think my favorite of all of her books. I'm a little partial to Something Borrowed, Something Blue, but this one I thought was really, really interesting. And this is first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes a baby carriage, question mark. Isn't that what all women want? So this is about Claudia and her husband, Ben. So Claudia has never been interested in having children and had a hard time finding anyone who felt the same way that she did. And she meets Ben and they get married and they are both happy to live a child free by choice existence and be married and live their lives and have their careers. And then a few years into their marriage, somebody changes their mind. So this becomes a question of what do you do when you're absolutely in love with your partner, but you find that you are now wanting different things that you wanted when you originally got together, what you agreed on as your life, are you sort of beheld to those agreements that you made? So it's not that anybody duped each other into the relationship, but as you grow and change, the things that you're interested in and your desires and your wants change along the way. So this is about 
their marriage and what happens next when they are no longer on the same page about having a child. So I have not read this book in a long time, but I've read it multiple times. And here we go again, I wanna read it again. But it says, this is a witty heartfelt story about what happens to the perfect couple when, when they suddenly want different things. So we get a lot of different dynamics, not just between Ben and Claudia, but their friends. And when you're in a long-term relationship or a marriage or a partnership, you have that friend circle and it's about people taking sides or choosing sides. And how do you move on, as I said, when you are still completely in love with the person you're with, but you suddenly want different things. And how do you cope with that? And what do you do? So I found this book to just be really interesting. I think even just from a commentary standpoint, and I loved it. I just absolutely loved it. And I think this is kind of Emily Giffen sort of at her prime in my opinion. And I just think it's great. So let me know if you've read this one. I have this newspaper clipping from how many years ago? I dated it, good for me. July 2nd, 2000. This is the New York Times Sunday Style section. So this is when Baby Proof come, came out. She did a signing in New York. So I got to meet her and go to readings. These are the things I miss about life before. But anyway, such a great book and such a huge fan. The next book I have is the first in what was a four book series and it's the Rachel Benjamin mystery series. And this one's called The Pact and it says weddings can be murder. So when I was first writing books, I was writing a lot of kind of women's fiction, 20 something slice of life, coping with life in your 20s. And this was the first book I read that really married mystery and murder with sort of more of that women's fiction chiclet genre. So that was originally my entryway in to my murder books before I started to write darker messed up murdery books. But I found this book to be like such a game changer for me in terms of writing, in terms of like marrying together those two styles and storylines. And I absolutely loved it. So these books were published by Red Dress Inc. I don't know if anybody else remembers Red Dress Inc. And let me just do a quick check of when this one came out. So this came out in 2004. And like I said, this was the first of a four book series. I don't even know if Jennifer Sturman is still writing, but I just loved this so much. So this follows Rachel and her four best friends. And when they were in college together, they make a pact about not letting anybody marry a completely horrible man. And if somebody is going to marry a completely horrible man, they will step up and say something about it. So it says a mystery for anyone who has ever hated her friend's boyfriend. <laughs> Rachel and her friends aren't looking forward to Emma's wedding. The groom is a rat and nobody can understand what Emma sees in him. So when he turns up dead on the morning of the ceremony, no one in the wedding party is all that upset, not even Emma. So this has got a little bit of an isolation thriller to it. They are at Rachel's parents' house in the Adirondacks. And the only people who are staying at the house are her parents, the wedding party, and I think like a couple select guests. So it's sort of a somebody here did it kind of a mystery and I loved it and it was funny and it was like great friendship book it is dog-eared to all the different ways and I absolutely loved it so definitely I'm gonna see if I can find this one anywhere to let you guys know I would hate to think that I'm going to show you guys a book that you can't get your hands on but I loved this series and here I am in the middle of series September and I'm thinking maybe I'll reread this one the next book I have is It's Always the Husband by Michelle Campbell. So this is another book that is about a group of friends and some secrets and some lies and some past and present mysteries. And they meet when they're in college. And I just love that female friendship dynamic that happens in college and all the things that go along with it. So in this one, we are following Kate, Aubrey, and Jenny. I am enunciating Aubrey, so you know it's not Audrey. So they first meet as college roommates. They're totally inseparable. They couldn't be more different, but they find sort of that common ground together and become fast friends. And then 20 years later, one of them is standing at the edge of a bridge and someone is urging her to jump. How did it get to this? Kate married the gorgeous party boy, Aubrey married up, and Jenny married the boy next door. But how can these three women love and hate each other? Can feelings this strong lead to murder? When one of them dies under mysterious circumstances, will everyone assume, as is often the case, that it's always the husband? So I adored this book, and I feel like adored sounds 
condescending. I don't mean to make it sound condescending. I really, like, I really, really enjoyed this book. So I love the way this book plays on tropes, like the it's always the husband, gone girl trope here, and how it sort of twists and turns and plays with that. So this book, like I said, we kind of jump back and forth in time between when they were in college, we get to see sort of that first meeting freshman year to how their friendship has changed over the years. And this is another one of those books where I feel like who you are when you are 17 or 18, when you're meeting each other versus who you are as adults, but how oftentimes these relationships for people who have known you either when you're in high school or younger or in college, they expect you to still be that same person. And a lot of times the dynamic of when you are in that group or amongst those friends, everyone sort of falls into like their place and their role in the group. And I just really enjoyed this. So I remember not quite knowing what was what and having a great time with that. And I just love a book that twists me and turns me and just here for like the sheer enjoyment of it all. But cheers to Michelle Campbell for this one. So definitely a friend of me vibe. So we had like, what happens when you hate your friend's boyfriend? And this is like, what happens when you maybe kind of hate your best friend. Another book about the friends you knew in college and kind of a past and present book. There's definitely like a theme to these books that I'm picking today is Alison Winscotch and this is in 20 years. This is another book that made me so sentimental for college and my friend and just made me miss everybody to pieces. I read this years ago. I have read a whole bunch of her books and I'm such a huge fan of her writing. But this is Old Friends Reunite for a Fateful Weekend. In order to move forward, they have to go back. So these six friends went to Penn and they shared a house. They were the best of friends. It's a co-ed friend group and their ringleader of the group is B and it says they naively thought that their friendships would endure until the death of B splintered the group for good. Now mostly estranged from one another, the remaining five reluctantly gathered at the same house on the eve of what would have been B's 40th birthday. So we are getting to see them in the past and in the present, how they've changed, what exactly splintered the entire group. Again, secrets, lies, complicated relationships between the group. And I love the reuniting at the house where they used to live and trying to celebrate B, but also come to terms with everything that happened up until her death and everything that has changed since. And I just absolutely love this book. I also, this is gonna make people cringe. I a thousand percent wrote in the back of the book. So again, I used to read when I was on the train. Oh, I just underlined, I went, I went all in on this book because I loved it so much. There's so many underlined passages in here. Oh my goodness, I didn't even realize how much I just completely went all in on this book. But I just absolutely loved it. And I love trying to figure out what happened before. And again, that evolving relationship between the different friends. And so, like I said, sort of like very similar themes in a lot of different ways, but how you were when you were younger, who you are now, trying to reconcile the two, trying to not even like convince people that you have changed, but to like have people see you through a different lens and in a new light and not just assume you were the person you used to be. But I just love these books where like all the baggage comes out for all to see and everybody is forced to confront it and reckon with it. And like it says, you either, like in order to move forward, they have to go back. So you have to confront everything that happened then. And I just loved it. So totally obsessed, totally a fan. If you are not reading Alison Winscotch, this book is absolutely amazing. Time of Your Life is great. She has a new book coming out. I will put that down below also, either end of this year or beginning of next year. And I just think she's amazing. So there you go. I don't know why I keep making those like noises, but I do. I try and edit them out when I can. <laughs> I'm spazzing. All right, last book. This is Lie to Me by J.T. Ellison. This is the first J.T. Ellison book that I read, and this is also in a very similar kind of tropey Gone Girl sort of a way in that we have, did the husband do it? Question mark. So in this one, we have Sutton and Ethan Moncler. They have an idyllic life, but nothing is as it appears. So one morning, Ethan wakes up and he finds that Sutton is gone and she's left behind a note that says not to look for her. So Ethan finds himself as the target of gossip and he becomes under great suspicion for having done something to Sutton because nobody can get in touch with her. So this becomes a 
kind of like I say, gone girlish sort of thing. The husband is always to blame. Obviously the husband did it. What is going on here? What happened? So we get the launching of a police investigation because her friends are starting to worry and her family is starting to worry and Ethan is starting to worry. Or so he says, is he starting to worry? So it says secrets that have been spinning for years quickly start to unravel. Is Ethan a killer? Is he being set up? You're gonna have to tune in to find out. I just absolutely love this. This made me a big fan of JT Ellison. So I have read a few of her books. I have many more that I need to read to catch up on. She also has a new book coming out. So if you're looking for a place to start with her, I think this is a great one. It's totally a standalone and I had great fun with it. I'm gonna hesitate to say much more because I don't wanna give anything away, but there's a, there's a lot happening here and I thought it was so well done and I'm a fan. So that's gonna do it for the first round of Authors I Don't Talk About Enough. Shout out whoever you guys wanna shout out down below, either people you think I should be reading, I'll be curious if I have them on my shelf, or authors that you love that you feel like don't get enough airtime and don't get enough screaming and raving about here on booktube. So let me know down below and until the next video, take care you guys, thanks for being here as always, and I'll see you when I see you, bye.